Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you become an expert primary maths teacher so that you can help all your children love maths and become fluent, creative and confident with it. This video is all about problem solving age six to seven. In this video, I'm going to explain what I mean by problem solving. I'll take you through some problems so you can start to imagine how they're going to work in practice. And I'll show you some places you can find some great problems for your students to solve. Right, let's get started by explaining what I mean by problem solving. And I'm going to start off by saying what I'm not covering. I'm not covering the application of the mathematical methods that we teach up to this age group to real situations. If you want to understand about that, you need to look at my video in this series, in this playlist on listening to children and look at the strategy of reification, which should be built into your lessons throughout your year. I'm also not focusing particularly on getting children speaking, making them articulate and explaining their own thinking about mathematics. That's covered in that same video. It should be embedded right through your year of teaching. And I also want to clarify that problem solving is not about finding solutions. It's about the process of problem solving. It's about being lost in a problem and having no idea what to do and trying to puzzle out how to even understand the problem, let alone begin to make progress with it. So there we get to my explanation of what problem solving is. It's about grappling with problems where nobody's got any idea what's going on or what to do at the start of the process. And it's even better if you, the teacher, don't know the answer to the problem and would struggle to find it quickly. It's about children learning to enjoy being lost in mathematical problems and struggling with them. So let's look at an example. In this box, I've got two eggs. It's a normal six egg egg box. It's your job to guess where those two eggs might be. Now I've created this worksheet, which you'll find if you go to the About section for this YouTube channel, you'll be able to see where you can download my free worksheets. And children could colour in two places in the egg box where they think the eggs might be. They might not quite know what's going on yet, but that's fine. And then you open the egg box. And I've put them here. Has anyone got it right? What about if I, the teacher, let you colour in different places these eggs might be on your worksheet. And let them get on with that. And then after a while we can do it again. Right, let's open the egg box again and see if anyone's got my solution of where my eggs are. Of course you could do this with counters, it doesn't have to be eggs. And we could look at who's managed to find this solution on their worksheet. And by now they should have a feel for what's going on here. And then we can set them the challenge in groups, we can give them piles of these worksheets in pairs or threes or fours. Can they try and find every possible solution so they can be sure that they'll have a winning diagram if I open this egg box again? Can they work systematically? How many solutions are there? Are they sure? Can they justify that they've found them all? and that they've got no repeats and that they've got the right answer for how many solutions they are. Can they lay them out systematically and clearly in a worksheet? If they can manage that, there's lots of places we can go with this problem. What about three eggs? What about two eggs in a larger box? What problem would they like to investigate? And there you go, you have a problem solving lesson. One feature of it is that it's not very age specific. You could have much older children deeply engaged in this task. But as we work with older children later on, we'll want to set up specific stages of problem solving processes so they learn to be consciously aware of the different strategies they're applying. At age six to seven, it's much more organic than that. We can talk about working systematically. We can try to get them to unpack their thinking and start to develop strategies and that's pretty much it. That's all we're looking for and the joy of being lost in a mathematical problem. Another classic problem, if you have queens and air rods, is making trains. How can you make a train that's three cars long if one white cube is a car? 
Well, we could have three white cubes, or we could have a red block of two and a white cube, or we could have that the other way around, or we could have a single train of three, which is the pale green. What about trains of four? Trains of five? What about blocks of four? Remember, it really doesn't matter if children come up with a perfect systematic list of solutions. That's not the point. The point is to enjoy puzzling. And in both those problems, I've started to touch on the idea that children can develop the problem in the direction they want to go in. But we can take it much further than that. When your children in your class come up with things they want to investigate across all subjects, do you put a list of them on the wall and see if you can come back to them later or see if people can investigate them on their own and bring back some more thoughts? You can certainly do that in maths across number work, across shape and space, across measure, across data handling, where they come up with ideas they want to explore. Just capture that and then maybe come back to it in a problem solving lesson if you can. It may be that when children are working with shapes, they want to explore them more. So why not come back and see if they can make tessellations, repeating patterns that cover all space with their shapes? Capture what they're doing. But you might be stuck for ideas about problems to solve. So I'm going to recommend two places you can go to find lots of great problems for working with this age group. The first is the Enrich site, which is enrich.maths.org. You want to go to primary students and then down to activities and games and browse by maths topic. And then if you look within these topics, number, shape, data and measurement, if we look into number, there are lots of subtopics. So you can find something that's going to complement the topic you've been working on. And when you go into that topic, you want to select age five to seven and there'll be lots of problems for you there. And there are so many problems on this site, you'll always be able to find something that's fresh for you as well, which is lovely. Some of the problems are a bit closed. Sometimes you've got a one to 100 number square in bits and you've just got to put them together to complete the square. There's nothing wrong with doing problems like that, but it's really important to do some work with problems where no one's got a clue what's going on. And there are plenty of those as well on the Enrich site. The other resource I want to recommend is Gareth Metcalf's new IC problem solving book for this age group. You can find that on his IC Maths site. This is the resource here, IC Problem Solving Y2. He sent me some sample tasks here. This is a typical challenge. You get children going, understanding that they're trying to add up the rows and add up the columns. And there's a check task here that's a little bit different just to check they fully understand what they're doing. And then quite quickly, we want to move on to a challenge where they've got six number tiles to place in the 16 spaces on this square to make this grid work to give the totals that are shown here. It's a really tricky challenge that teachers are likely to struggle with as well as children. And then there are some extension challenges just in case anyone manages to solve it. And if you've got a great problem solving lesson going on, then it's really difficult to predict which child is going to solve the problem. And it's absolutely wonderful when it's the child that you least expect. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you think it's useful and you're able to share it with friends or colleagues or in social media groups, I'd be hugely grateful. If you've got any suggestions regarding problem solving tasks, please do add them in the comments. I'd love to know about your thoughts on this topic. I've published videos on every primary maths topic and you can find out more about them if you go to the about section of this YouTube channel where you can also find links to the free to download worksheets. Hope you love your problem solving with your children. Bye for now.